All right, Elliot Kotek, Editor-in-Chief of Moving Pictures Magazine. We're coming to you live from Tribeca. We're here with Miguel Coyula. Miguel Coyula's film Red Cockroaches was made for a, a budget of? $2,000. A, uh, a couple of years ago and has now uh, won awards at over 20 film festivals around the, around, around the globe. Um, tell me about the reception that Red Cockroaches has had and how you feel about that. Well, it was amazing. I mean, I, I came to New York on a scholarship to the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute, and I decided I, I wanted to make my first feature, and uh, so I started shooting with nothing, basically with uh, uh, shooting on weekends whenever the actors had the chance to, and it took me two years to make the film, and then we had a New York premiere at the Havana Film Festival, and uh, we got an amazing review in Variety, and that was it. The festival started inviting the film everywhere, so it's been great, and it had just got released on DVD. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very controversial film. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, uh, so it makes me feel great because it's some compromise in that sense. It's, uh, I'm not thinking of uh, compromising for a specific type of audience, but just I, well, I, I like to do the kind of films I would like to go to see in the screen. Uh, where do you think Cuban filmmaking is at at the moment? There was a period of time when there were a lot of romantic films coming out of, I mean, a romantic period in Cuban filmmaking and probably hasn't been so much for a little while and now there's like a do you think there's a resurgence in cuban filmmaking again now yeah i think that thanks to digital technology there has been another awakening in, in the film industry although it's not really the industry anymore it's more like isolated independent filmmakers that are doing their own films with a camera and a computer basically because before they depended on the whole industry thing with 35 millimeter and all that so I think that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, the Cuban film industry started depending on, on foreign investors and that made the films have to have like, you know, the uh, cliche view of Cuba, like the dancing girls, the beaches and all the rum, the tobacco, the cohibas and all that kind of view that, that was terrible. So now by doing the films independently, the filmmakers are sort of finding a new voice that was missing. And how many hats did you wear on Red Cockroaches? I know you were both the writer and director, and, but then you also did a few other things to do, like also in the film. Uh, well, yeah, I basically did the, everything in Red Cockroaches. I shot the film, I edited, I did the music uh, because I couldn't afford to pay anybody. So, and, and since I was a teenager, I decided uh, for the kind of films I wanted to make, I had to learn to do everything myself because I didn't want to rely on depending on investors or that kind of so it's a real success story that shows that people can do anything if they set their mind to it, really, because you had no budget, you did everything, you composed the music, you edited, you wrote it, you directed it, and yet it screened at over 20 festivals around the world and received distribution. Yeah, well, it's great. I think that what you don't have in money, you have to put up with time. Uh, like, the film took two years to make, and, and I think that today, thanks to digital technology, you can create a product that it's uh, on the technical level uh, on par with uh, anything on the mainstream. And your next project? My next project is a follow-up to a classic Cuban film from 1968 called Memories of Underdevelopment, uh, which is uh, based on a novel by the same writer who just finished a follow-up now. He's 76 years old, and uh, it's a story of a Cuban intellectual that in the original film he couldn't adapt to the process of the Cuban Revolution, and in the follow-up he emigrates to the U.S. He's an exile in the U.S., and he can't adapt to the process of the U.S. It's a sort of like... A, like a story of the stranger by Camus, but uh, he's a Cuban character in this case, and he sort of takes a position of, a, of an observant and analyzes society. He's very cynical and very uh, has a very dark sense of humor. Well, congratulations! You've just come back from filming part of that in Havana. I understand you're also filming in Utah and a couple yeah. other locations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came back from Havana. We were shooting for three weeks there. It was very intense, and uh, we are shooting in Venice, Paris. Uh, Bahamas and Utah is the last location and we shot a lot of in New York already. The idea is to put together, I mean start doing the film in chronological order ideally to show it to investors and see if they, but also to have a product that we can show already and finish the film if we don't find anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, thanks for stopping by Miguel, thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks. thanks. Thank <laughs> you.